What are you? What are you? What, what are, are you? you? Hello, my friend. I have a very strange review for you today of a very strange product that I'm not even really sure what's happening with it. This is the Becca Zero No Pigment Foundation. You heard that right. It is a foundation with no pigment. We're gonna go into what Becca claims this is and then we are going to try it and see what it actually does. So you can decide whether this is worth your money or not. If that sounds interesting to you, hang tight. We're getting into it right now. So like I mentioned, this is supposedly a foundation, not a primer, but a foundation that has no pigment. I'll read what it says on Becca's website. It says, our new makeup and skincare hybrid to smooth and blur the appearance of skin while hydrating all day with a transparent matte finish. That is a lot of claims for this product. So we're going to be looking for makeup, obviously. We're also going to be looking for skincare in this product. We're gonna go through the ingredients and see if we can find some skincare in here. And then we are looking for something that is going to blur the appearance of skin. Personally, I want to look like I have skin. That, that, the not having skin thing would be quite scary, but I think what they're trying to say is maybe the texture of the skin. We're gonna give them a little leeway on that. <laughs> we're also gonna be looking for hydrating ingredients. I'll tell you if it feels hydrating. And we're also gonna be looking for a matte finish. I do want to show you the photos that are on Becca's website. It's actually really interesting how they did this with kind of a swipe feature. So you can see the person both with the no pigment foundation and without. I thought that was very creative. They also have a video. I'm gonna go ahead and play a clip of that for you right now. What's up guys, I'm Lija. And I'm Yvonne, and this is Becca's new Zero No Pigment Virtual Foundation. With Zero, skin is amped up, not covered up. This foundation has zero pigment, so it gives your skin a smoothed out, blurred out, virtually invisible finish. It's totally matte and totally transparent. I mean, you can't see it. Plus, it's a skincare hybrid. So hydrating, with a gel-like texture, it's like a splash of water on your face. And it not only hydrates all day, it controls oil all day too. Which means you get this fresh, natural look if you're not into that whole full face foundation thing or if you just wanna take a break from traditional foundations. Zero no pigment virtual foundation. Zero pigment, zero, zero to hide. Honestly, like I feel like the advertising of it is very compelling. I feel like, well, they got me, I bought it. <laughs> so um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to try this with you. I do want to go through this everything you need to know style though. So let's talk about where you can buy it. You can get it at Becca's website. That's where I got it. Some of the other places it's available now. Some of them it's going to be available early August. So we have Ulta, Cult Beauty, and Sephora. This product was actually made in Korea and it is listed as a 24 month shelf life. So that's good, longer shelf life. I'm all for that. Becca is a cruelty-free brand, meaning that they do not test on animals. They do not sell in countries where animal testing is required, but they are owned by Estee Lauder, and Estee Lauder does sell products in mainland China where they do have to go through animal testing in order to be sold. Now, there are some changes that might be happening to those regulations within the next year, but I will keep you posted on that. As of now, the animal testing is required, so that is for their parent company, not for Becca themselves. Brand controversies. Now, most of the controversies actually are around Jaclyn Hill that I know of about Becca and it has to do with like for example when she released her eyeshadow palette uh, people were complaining about the quality of it so Jacqueline said that she wanted all of the eyeshadow palettes pulled also she released her champagne pop highlighter and supposedly that was only going to be in the palettes that was the Jaclyn Hill palette and then they came out with it after in a single 
form. They came out with a liquid version and a cream version and it's still around and they had said it was limited edition and it's still around. They said they kept it around because it was so popular. Some people that's really irritating because they felt the need and the rush to go buy this palette when they didn't really need to rush to buy the palette if that's what they wanted. But some people see that as helping the consumer in that now they can get something that maybe they wouldn't have been able to get before. So it's really up to you whether that's a bad thing or not. For value for this, this is $36 and you do get one ounce of product. These uh, packaging where it's real squat often looks like it's not a lot of product, but one ounce is pretty standard for a foundation, for a primer, or whatever you wanna call this. And speaking of that, <laughs> <laughs> We're not really sure what this is. I looked and looked and looked all over the internet to try to find a formula that was similar to this, either a foundation maybe that has pigment that has this kind of base or a primer that has this kind of base, could not find a single thing. <laughs> so we're just gonna compare it value-wise to primers because I have a feeling that's what people are going to be most likely using this for. Uh, so $36 for an ounce is very, very typical for a Sephora sold brand. We have the Smashbox original photo finish primer, the smooth and blur one, that's $36 for an ounce, exact same thing. The Tula face filter, $34 for an ounce. The Benefit Professional, $32 for 0.75 ounces. And the Ulta Mattifying Face Primer, if you're gonna go to Ulta, if you want a less expensive mattifying, has similar claims, totally different ingredients, would be the Ulta one, $18 for an ounce. So typical Sephora pricing, is that expensive? It just depends on whether you're used to paying that much for a primer, and it also will depend on whether this stuff works or not. <laughs> Let's talk about the packaging for a minute. This feels very nice. I have to give them credit on the packaging. It feels very luxe. It's very heavy glass packaging. The top is made out of plastic. The base is all glass. You twist this open and as far as opening this, this is very easy to open. From when I first got it until now, you can seal it very gently. It's very easy to open. You just need to be able to pinch and turn, but you can see I'm not even pinching very hard. It's very easy to open. Now inside here, there is a little plastic tray and a little spatula for application is teeny teeny tiny it's so cute there's a little tab here that you have to be able to flick hold and pull and then there is your product there so I personally really like the packaging I think it feels great and I love the little spatula in there I without the spatula I would imagine it would get quite messy so you just have to make sure you don't lose it that's the only thing <laughs> All right, ingredient analysis. I'm not gonna hold you too long on this one, but I do wanna mention it. Top ingredient in this is water, which is very common for both primers and foundations. The next ingredient is something called sodium acrylate cross polymer two, and that is considered a film former. It's actually more commonly listed as an absorbent, which I thought was interesting. So if you do have oily skin, it's possible that this could help absorb your oil in your skin. I don't know, it, I couldn't find any research-based evidence that said this particular ingredient absorbed oil, but I do know that Cosmetic Ingredient Review and professional websites say that this is an absorbent. Absorbing what? I'm not 100% sure. Being a film former, I was curious to know whether this was also an occlusive ingredient, meaning that it will keep water and the hydration in your skin. I could not find evidence of that, so I'm going to assume that it does not have occlusive properties because I have no evidence that it does. That's gonna be important in just a second. Also in this, we have two humectants. We have glycerin and we have hyaluronic acid. Their job is to pull water from the air and from the water within the product into the top layers of your skin. The reason why the occlusive thing was important was because of these humectants. Because the glycerin and the hyaluronic acid pull water in from wherever they can get it, and they don't care where it comes from. If you don't have enough water in the product, enough water in the air, it could pull water from the lower layers of your skin. So what helps that to stop from happening is having good occlusive ingredients that seal it all in. Could not find them in this product. Doesn't mean they're not there. I am not a cosmetic chemist. I just couldn't identify an occlusive ingredient. So that's a concern I have for this product. So my warning to you is, is if you do purchase this and you notice that your skin seems to be drying out, I would definitely return it or just discontinue use immediately. One thing I was really surprised to not see in here 
with silicones or silica. Usually the silicones are used in primers in order to help your makeup last longer, in order to create that slip, to use as an occlusive property. And also the silica, if we're doing silica and not silicone, silica is a great oil absorber. So that's why we see them so much in primers, but they're not in here. So I'm super curious about that. If you wanna know more about silicones and silica and primers, I do have an entire video on face primers that explains all of those things and gives lots of recommendations. I will link that video down below for you. With that being said, it is now time to demo this product and show you what it actually does. So let's go ahead and zoom in real, real close on my face, closer than you ever wanted to be. Let's zoom in. I think this is the closest I've ever zoomed in with the camera because I want you to see every single pore in my skin. I want you to see every bit of texture that I have because I wanna see if this stuff fixes it. It just says to apply it with your fingertips, spread it on and pat it in. That's the directions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and we will scoop. And I'm just gonna do it on half, half my face at first so you can see the difference between the two sides. Okay, so let's do this side. Okay, so the first thing I feel is it does feel cold on my skin. Okay, and I'm just gonna rub it in. It feels like a gel-based lotion is what it feels like. It does not feel silicone-y. It still feels cold. It feels very wet. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit on my forehead. See what we can do with these wrangles. It's on, it still feels very wet. I wanna stress that. <laughs> it's, it's wet. I don't know if that's a bad thing. So let's go ahead and look real, real close and see if you can see a difference. I mean, I thought it would be more matte. I was expecting it to look more matte off the jump. I don't see it looking more matte, but it still feels wet. It's been on for at least a minute or two at this point, and it still feels wet, which is weird to me. So I'm gonna give it just a second to set in, and we'll be right back. All right, it's been five minutes, and I can tell you it definitely doesn't feel wet anymore, but I can definitely feel the film former on there. I can feel that there is a slight film on my face, especially when I move, I can feel it. Just like if you had a very light spray of hairspray or something, like I can feel something on my face. It's not uncomfortable, but if I think about it, I know it's there. I was expecting it to be even more mattifying. I don't have oily skin, I have normal skin. I was expecting my skin to be completely matte like a silicone primer would do, but I don't see that. I also don't see filling of my pores. I see looking at the two sides of my face, I definitely feel like I have less freckles over here, but this is my driving side. So I have a feeling there were probably less freckles over here to begin with. So to make sure, I wanna go ahead and I wanna put it on the rest of my face so that we can check this side as well since we know that both my sides are not exactly symmetrical with symmetrical sunspots and freckles and things like that. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. about the same amount. I'm hoping that I did. I feel like I put on the same amount. So now we're gonna go through the drying process again, but this is, now this side's wet and this side is dry. So maybe you're seeing something. You are zoomed in way further than I can see. I can't see as well as you can. So you'll have to tell me what you think as far as the dry side and the wet side. And then we're gonna come back in just a second with it completely dried down on both sides to see what you think about that. Okay, five minutes. What do you think? It's definitely doing nothing here, in my opinion. It's doing nothing there. But what about like pores and stuff? Maybe, maybe a little. 
I think maybe a little, but I have to really be looking for it. That's the thing. Is it's like $34, is it enough? I don't think so. I don't think it's enough, at least for me on my skin. I actually had high hopes for this. Like I really thought, like I put it on the back of my hand and I was like, oh, maybe, but let's just, let's just give it, let's do a side by side real quick. And I can still feel that film. I can feel it all over my face. I mean, it's not annoying. I would probably forget about it if I wasn't thinking about it, but it's there. So it's definitely something I wanna to note to you. All right, let's go ahead and zoom out for final thoughts. All right, final thoughts. Let's go back to the original claims. New makeup and skincare hybrid makeup I don't know what makeup is supposed to change the way your face looks in one way or another, right? Not really. Skincare, got some great humectants, but where are the occlusives? I am really concerned about the, this possibly not having anything to seal the moisture into my face. So I am definitely gonna be putting a moisturizer on over top of this or just washing this off completely after this because I personally don't trust it to not pull water out from the lower layers of my skin. Again, there could be something I'm missing, but I don't see this as skincare. Smooths and blurs the appearance of skin. I did not personally see that, at least enough for to justify the price that anybody else would notice. I don't know, maybe zoomed out, you can see it blurred a little more. Not, not really. I really wanted to, but I don't see it. I don't see it. Hydrating all day is a huge concern for me. We just talked about that. Transparent matte finish. My face is not matte. It's not, I don't even have oily skin. Like my face is not matte. It's just not, it's, it's not. That's sad, that's really sad. Like you had one job, you had, we have multiple jobs and you couldn't do any of them. I'm, what I am gonna do with this is I'm going to use this as a foundation primer over the next few weeks and I'm gonna update you with this in a favorites and fails coming up uh, and let you know how this worked as a primer and any other thoughts I have after using this for a while. This is the first time I've used it on my face. So this really is a first impression. I didn't really feel like we needed more than a first impression for those particular claims, but I wanna test out things it doesn't claim to do like make your makeup last longer. I, I wanna try that, see if maybe that is a thing and I will update you on this to see if there's any real use for this or if this is just complete nothing. My girl Angie Bergs did a great breakdown from a chemist's perspective of this product and what she called this was the emperor's new clothes in makeup. And that was what she described it without owning it just by looking at the ingredients. And I hate to say it, I think she was probably right. With that being said, it is your turn in the collective brain of Makeup Awesomeness where we help each other to not buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it. I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments below, especially on the zoomed in-ness of my face that you can see better than I can. If you've tried this product, if you have a different skin type, a different skin tone, what is your experience with it? What are your thoughts? I would love to know down in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please hit the thumbs up button. It only takes a second for you and it really helps me out a lot. If you wanna see more videos, videos like this, hit the subscribe button. And if you'd like to watch another video right now, YouTube should be, should be recommending a video for you right down there to watch. But if it is your time to go, thank you so much for hanging out as long as you did. Mad love to you. And I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye.